<laughs> um, we're live. We are live. Jessica, we are live. A very good evening to everyone that is watching us um, on this beautiful and very hot evening. Um, we are live again on our platform, the Wesley Gira say. As you know that Begeli Beg, we come to you with these conversations, with these sessions, whereby we are talking about topics that are very informative. So today we are back again with another topic. Um, our topic today is the dynamics of power. Um, we do have our guest um, who will be presenting on the topic that we are having today. And my name is Ukim D. But I'm coming to you live. Mtata, yay, kushush mtata. It is very hot. Um, let's start by welcoming U U Rev Mtembu. Rev Mtembu, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity and greetings to the colleagues who are joining us on this platform and also those who are joining us on the live streaming. I greet you all in the name of Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Rev. Rev Tebu, um, who will be one of our guests as we are having a topic today that is the dynamics of power. And our last guest um, is U U Rev JJ. Let me welcome you to the show. Thank you for, for the invite. And let me also greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior and all those who are joining us on this platform. We hope this will be a fruitful day for all of us. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, those are the people that you can expect on the show, um, Urev Mtembu and also Urev Uchanji. So remember just, you can be part of the conversation on our Facebook page. Wesley Gire say you check the on the comment section, you can be part of the conversation. If you've got any question, you've got any comment, you can drop it there and we'll attend those at a later stage. But for now, let us call U Ayanda Kaba to open this session with prayer. Over to you, my brother. Ayanda Klaba, can you please assist us and open with prayer? All right. Um, I think Ayanda Klaba is having a problem. Um, I will ask that we close our eyes and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord for the opportunity that you gave us this day. Titoto namandla, siyabulela ngosi, ngogoti wenanje ngoti kuya wa amba naati, titoto lungileyo. As we are about to start this session, titoto namandla, be the center of this conversation, titoto lungileyo. Magoti ngosi yongileza utetwa apa titoto namandla. As we look through into the dynamics of power, titoto namandla, sesonde la guwe ke titoto sibiza wenogoba, be with the guest together with as they will be making a presentation and also be with the viewers so that it will be this is very educational and this is very informative to go It is a space of gaining knowledge to go to Namanda. Sina de Gengosi, Usilondo Lose, Mogunangona Pagate. Amen. Um, we, without wasting any time, we'll now hand over to our first speaker, Reverend Mtembo. Over to you, please. Oh, friends, I greet you all once more, and thanks once more. Uh, friends, we are dealing with a topic which is power dynamics in leadership, or you can call it dynamics of power in leadership. Those, it's slightly different, but I think we'll be able to find ourselves as we engage each other through this evening. 
Uh, uh, first, let me try and unpack my understanding of power because I think power is at the center of this conversation, whether it is the dynamics on how it manifests or it is the leadership, what is expected. So power by definition is the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way. A position of control, authority, or influence over others or over situations. A power is defined as the ability to act and influence causes or visions or dreams or even changing of the status quo. An example of power is a strength that is needed on running something. So for, for the car to move, now people are, 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 are concerned or are a challenge all over because there is no power, there's no electricity power. So power is kind of something that drives something to do something. So, so I want us to be clear with that definition because at, this, at, at the first value of this topic itself, you will think that power is something that is it's bad or evil for leadership. So the dynamics of power then becomes uh, on things that affect relationship between two people or a group of people or many people, which means that how the power manifest in the leadership context, it's based on how people or situations view that power on how it is distributed, how it's been exercised, and how that power influenced uh, people. As I've said earlier on, most of the time, that manifestation can be viewed as evil, can be viewed as wrong. Uh, that's why you will hear phrases like misuse of power or power hoggers or, or power uh, 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 centered or things like that, that people are obsessed with power because as soon as a person is given that power or that authority to, con to, to influence or convince or even lead situations, it becomes as if that person is using that power, depending again on the subjects, on the people who are looking at that person, you will find them saying, uh, so-and-so is mus using power, while others will be saying, wow, what a display of leadership. So I want to say from the way it go that power isn't inherent evil. So, so it's not that power naturally is an evil or a wrong thing, but rather power is something that can be used both for good and for bad. Like I believe anything that is under the earth can be used for both good or evil. And power also is something that can be built. So you build power base you build a certain group of people that at the hand will hand you power, or power you can say others believe that you are born with the people who've got charismatic power. You know, that when they come in at any situation, their power manifest in that particular uh, context or in that particular um, uh, environment. I want also to state from the word go that power in leadership can be viewed as a system of controlling people unjustly. So if you look at the ruling party, if you look at the church, if you look anywhere, you'll find that they are power base of, of, of power. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are positions of power. And sometimes that power is used in a way that it is not good. Let me put it in this way. We call it in the leadership language, artifacts, the things that make leadership access and use power. Leadership to access and use power. We call those things artifacts, things that influence situations to become what they could be. So you find that the first of them is society expectation, the artifact of the society expectation. For example, now that we are in the season of, 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 of campaigning, Politicians are telling the society, the communities, what they want to hear so that they can give them power. So you ask people who influence a society to give you power 
so that you can be able to rule that particular group. So you find it even in the church context when people campaign, when people uh, uh, speak on, if you've got this leader, what is it that you are going to get? If we got this leader, what is it that you're going to get? So society becomes the artifact of power. It becomes the artifact of power because society does give power through their expectations. So if we say in this community, we want a counselor who's going to give us water. When someone comes to us and say, I am going to give you water, we are going to give you power to do that. But also there is what you call ethos, the things that are generally known in the community or in the setup where people are, where you'll find that there are not necessary, necessary laws, but there are things that people have lived with throughout so many years. And those things become the ethos of, 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 of power in leadership. Obviously, there is also laws and policies, which once you become a leader, you become a custodian of the constitution of that particular uh, community. If you're in the church, you become a custodian of the laws and discipline. Now, laws and discipline contains power. So as soon as you, you are given that position in the church, you then possess power that is given to you by those laws and those policies. Also, that's why the, the president of the country is being uh, declared as someone who's supposed to be a custodian of the constitution of the land. So you find that there is power that is given to you because of laws. Police, they've got power to arrest you. All those powers can, can manifest in different ways. And also there's power in what you call as part of art artifact, it's tradition. You know, uh, we saw with the Zulu monarchy, we saw with other monarchies where there is a traditional expectation that who's going to ascend into position of power and that tradition therefore gives the individual a certain power. And I want to say that also, not only a person, whatever that I'm talking about, I'm not talking about an individual who becomes a, 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 a custodian of, 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 of power, but a group of people, you know, you find that in, in a Zulu expression, there's something that says, Inko si aibus nababegi bai, meaning that the people who have been campaigning, mobilizing, supporting the king does not uh, what you call reign with the king. You know, why, where does that come from? It comes from the fact that any leader must, must reign with people that he trust, people that's good. And now that entourage becomes the basis of power. Whether people, they like it or not, as soon as people start to campaign for you, as soon as they start their names, next to yours, they are expecting something. Obviously, there is also history because of time I won't get into it. There is just tradition and history that is passed from generation to generation. Even in the church, you find dynamics that there is a group of people who hold power. Whether you like it or not, somehow it becomes ethical, uh, ethnicity or tribal orientated, class orientated, finances orientated, you know, on top of that, there is also resources that becomes artifacts of, 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 of power. For example, when you speak about the unsealing of the, of the R17, the question there is that who donated, what resources were placed there, and what power those people brought into the table. So those are the artifacts. Now, the artifacts are very important because when we deal with a leader at first value, and the exercise of power of that particular leader. We look at him or her and don't ask a question, what are the influences? What is it that makes this person to think this way, to consider these people and to use these people? When it comes to certain people to be disciplined, it becomes harsh. When it goes to certain people to be disciplined, it becomes soft. Why, why, why there are those underlying things? So those things are very important as artifacts on how the leaders get into power. So now power and leadership, if I can, I can, get, I can get into that. And I want to say friends, for, for the purpose of this conversation, I'm going to say leadership is power. And this is not, is ex, is not exclusive. It's not a definition that is exclusive, but it is a definition of this particular conversation. Leadership is power.
Leadership is power because leadership comes with what I call group dynamics versus individual position. For example, we elect someone into a position of power to exercise authority to, to lead us and all that. As I've said earlier on, who brought that person? For what interest they brought that person? What is it that they want to achieve through those to that individual? So power then does not become an individual thing, but it becomes something that is shared amongst that particular group. Today in politics, they call it factions, where you see that certain agenda is for certain individual. And, and I want to also mention this, that whoever wants to accede, ascend to power, whenever they campaign for power, if there's a group A and group B, and group A gets to win the position that they were campaigning for, you will find that group B will be throwing insults, saying that uh, group A uh, did this and that and that, and when they're in power, they're going to do one, two, three, and four and become very critical. But when it's them who won the elections, they don't do that. And I've seen the trend here in the church. As soon as someone loses the election, they become very bitter towards a certain group, sending email, writing this and doing that. Because the whole obsession is about power. But when, as soon as you lose, you can criticize power, but when you win, power is good when your particular group or particular individual has won. So, so, so I, I'm just saying that leadership and power cannot be separatable. You cannot say today, I'm a leader, I don't, I, I don't want to use my power, I, I'm free from using my power. No, as soon as you get into a leader, if you're leading the society, you need to instill certain disciplines that you will need your power in that. As I've said, leadership is not inherited. I think we saw that even the traditional leaders the people that are by birthright, they should be kings. They are also contested. Leadership is a contested terrain. No matter where you are, no, ma no matter how much we say we discern, we listen to God, we listen to the spirit, but at the core of it, it is a contested terrain. terrain. So each and everyone who gets into ambitions of leadership, they must know that they are going to be under scrutiny. And that scrutiny, whatever that you go through, you must know that that forms the power that you possess. More the, the cost, more the hardship. So you're not going to uh, think that you are going to just roll over a, a, a milk and butter and think that you are then going to be then a leader. You must know that even a church, you know that there's contest, there's contest because there's no inherent leadership. There will always be contest. Leadership is contested and leadership, it's power over and about resources. So who says what? We know that at the church, there are people who, because they are rich, they come for one a, a meeting, quarterly meeting, the next thing they are, they are second steward because they've got resources, they've got cars, they, they sponsor things. Other people, they even buy this position, politics, government, society, community, church, wherever you go, because of the power that is contested. And then I want to just go through the types of leadership and then I'm going to hand over. I was not really given a specific time. So I'm going to skip all these other and just go to types of this leadership. Uh, there's a cohesive uh, power, which I'm not going to, to dwell much on it. Uh, there is reward power. And that forms leadership. You know, once you elect him Tembu, you know that you are going to have a plan there. You are going to do that. You are going to do that. There is a formal power where you are given in a position and you are expected to execute all those artifacts that I, I explained uh, earlier on. There is connection power. There is referential power. There is informational power. There is expert power. There are people who dominate certain subjects, debates, and even the direction because they are just more in, in, informed in that. And I want to conclude by just giving references on some of the books that you can read in order to get more of these dynamics of leadership. As I've said that, I'll skip most of my presentation and then I can engage later if there is a need. But books, 48 Laws of Power, it's a good book to read as a leader, to understand your power, to be able to self-critique 
yourself on how you use and manage your power. There's a book uh, by Sun Tzu, The Art of War. There's a book, uh, Systems Thinking, Creative Holiness, which gives a creative way of how to manage and handle power in leadership. There's a fifth discipline, the learning organization, and there's another one by Peter Sanger called The Dance of Change. All those books, they will give you an understanding and meaning on how to execute, manage, and be aware of the power that you possess. I think. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Chamber, for the presentation. Um, that was very powerful. Just to remind people that we are having a topic today that is the dynamics of power. And as you have seen, we are having guests, which is uh, Rev Mteb, who just made the presentation and will be now handing over to Rev Judges. But just to remind you, you can be part of the conversation on our Facebook page, the Wesley Gear SA. On the comment section, you leave your comment there, you leave your question there, and we'll attend to those after this presentation. Let us hand over to you now, Rev JJ. Uh, thank you, uh, my brother. And by, by way of introducing my, my conversation, dynamics of power in leadership. Uh, firstly, when I looked at the topic, from the onset, the topic suggests we are dealing with a concept that is not static. When we use the word dynamic, it means it is not static. It means it is a concept that can manifest itself differently in different situations and in different leaders or people. Dynamic of power depends on the outlook and perception of a leader. Is leadership giving power or is it power that makes you a leader to be recognized as a powerful leader? The topic for me uh, suggests that in leadership, there are radically new dynamic roles. Everybody talks about how leadership has changed because it is dynamic. The understanding of leadership and our expectation as leaders have permanently changed, hence dynamic. The change that we experience, the writer and the practitioner to talk about, would talk about paradigm shift, they would talk about transformation, or they would talk about an awakening because they deal with leadership that is dynamic. And I also want to be haste to say, power and leadership goes ahead in love. And I will also want to be haste to say, when power is used, divorced or isolated from leadership, then power can be dangerous or can cause harm and havoc or damage. I'm saying power cannot function in isolation. Power and control must be harnessed by good leadership for it to be, to function properly. Power divorced from leadership, the first damage that it would do when power is divorced from leadership, it underappreciates followers or subordinates. Once power is divorced from leadership, it would leave talented people or it would even push talented people to the, to the, to the, to the margins, to the peripheries. Power without leadership would end up not wanting to develop people with good talent because already it means that power is under pressure of being threatened by anybody who would be informed. 
power alone without devoid of leadership depress can cause depression it leaves people sick power alone give the impression of welcoming participation when power alone functions without leadership it it it, it creates an impression that it is welcoming others to participate but fails to facilitate and i want to repeat that you, you, you pretend to be welcoming others to participate when at the same time you fail to facilitate their participation. One writer, Leonard Dohan, in his book, Spiritual Leadership, A Quest for Integrity, Leonard Dohan alludes, you cannot teach empowerment when you have practiced this empowerment for a, for, for a very long time or for years. When practical, when practice disempowerment for a long time, the danger is people can see through you that you are not sincere. They would see insincerity and hypocrisy. They see double standards in you because you welcome participation, but you don't facilitate that they, they work or they have a space to carry out their God-given talent. Leadership must be well-grounded in order to handle power and not be threatened by pressure to do something either personally or collab collaboratively so. When power functions in isolation, it corrupts. It seeks personal fame and self-importance Power, when it functions in isolation, the talk is great, but the talk is cheap. Power can place you in, a, in control, but with no effective influence over your followers or your subordinates. We therefore must have systems in place that prevent the leader from believing that his or her position of responsibility is his or her reason for omnipotence. Leadership and power goes in hand in love, I've said. There must be synergy between the two, between power and leadership. And let me illustrate this one. I want to illustrate this point. When it is the X and the stick, the X can only carry out the function of chopping because there is a stick that you handle the X with. But once the X steps from the stick, then the X become useless. But the stick will also be doing work which is not assigned to. Because the stick can only carry out the function when it has got the X. But once the stick is without the X, the stick can damage, the stick can be can be used as destructive and destroy and hurt. I'm substantiating the point that power and leadership needs to be together. Leadership must harness it. Leadership is not an individual thing. It belongs to a community and is exercised by that community. An arrogant leader would instead take credit for work done by others. Because I am in power, though the work is carried out and the function is carried out by other people, he will get the glory and the credit. The era of judgment and refusal to listen. We find ourselves now in a time where the country, where the church cannot listen to followers. And because they have failed to listen to good advice from followers, left millions of followers as physical, emotional, or economic casualties. Too many leaders fail to be sources of life because they lost touch with leadership and they maintain power. The heart of leadership is not discovered in new skills. 
the heart of leadership is a changed attitude toward, towards others. A genuine change in mind, a genuine change of heart and mind. A heart, the leadership, the heart of leadership lies in the heart of leadership. And I wish to repeat that. The heart of leadership lies in the heart of leaders. A true, true, true leader must love and let love. I would, that is a theological concept, love and let love. So a true leader must facilitate, must love so that others can love. He must open avenues. Leadership is not a position, but leadership is a function. Whether you have got powers as a leader, your duty is not to manage, but it is to lead. It is to take people from a place to a place. I think let me stop there in order. Can I stop there, facilitator? No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I love the last part that you, you've made that um, leadership is not a position. Um, it is a function. Um, I, I've listened to both presentations and um, I've got some few questions that I'd love us to go through and then sure. we'll talk, we'll check on, on, on our Facebook page before we can conclude with our conversation. Um, the first question is, how, how is the like the dynamic of power gained and used? Um, that, that is my first question. And, and secondly, how does it flow through in communities and also cultures? And the third one is how does like the dynamic of power influence our choices and also identities? Those are the three questions, like the first three questions that I would love that we, we attempt on, on answering. The first one is how does a dynamic of power, um, how, how is it gained and used? You know, uh, maybe we can say like looking, you know, um, and secondly, how does it flow? through e e communities and cultures? And the third one, how does a dynamic of power influence our choices and also identity? So I don't know between the two of you before the bomb, who will be the first one to attempt in answering these questions? The, the, the first question for me, how is it gained? Power is, is, is inherent in, in leadership. When you accede to a, the level of power, automatically we know you are given power. I mean, you are given responsibility. You are given in leadership. Leadership goes with responsibility. And when you've got responsibility, it means you've got power to carry out a function. So it is, it is, it is not gained, it is inherent in, in whatever uh, uh, position that you are sit or that you that you 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 get into already that there, there is power. Power would, would power is not something that you would say you 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 order it over the counter. Getting into a, a position, getting into leadership already, we yeah. expect there is an amount of power because you cannot be given work and a, 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 a job when you, are, you don't have responsibility. And if yes. you don't have responsibility, you'll have to go back every time and go and ask, how far is it? And you will no longer be a leader, but you'll be a well barrow. So I mm. think for me, this is my own hypothesis now. Okay. Power is inherent in leadership. Mm. Yeah. 
let, let, let me. All right, uh, yeah. Reverend Tembo, what's your thought on the first question? For me, let me let me refer you to two <clears throat> to two books that I, I I mentioned that I've I've read when it comes to power. They are very secular, okay. and and that is mm. intentional. Uh, the, 40, mm. the the 40, 48 laws of power. Let me let me take one. Uh, law twenty nine. It say plan mm. all the way to the end. Mm. So 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 when when you say you are available, whether you apply for a CEO position, whether you are available for a position where you are going to be elected, be it president of the country, be the presiding bishop, be a second steward, you already mm. have something that informs you right before you start. The illusion that we have that we, we elect person to an office, then the office is going to clean the person. It's an illusion. Everyone who, who once you say yes, you are agree, you already plan your way out of it already. And you can go to many of mm. those laws of, of, of power. You can go to where, where it says, never put trust in friends, learn to how to use enemies. That's a law of power. And everyone who gets to the position, they mm. get to the position with those tools already. Even the people who put them into those position, they already, you know, you know make, let me make an example that is obvious and known. There are people who support the bishop because they want the station. So, so you cannot therefore say the person who is now in the, in the position is the person who's, pos who's possessing that power. That power for the dynamics of power for me, it's distributed within that particular community. There is no singular power that influences the cause, but it is the dynamics of what interests are there for those who are part of that particular system. Mm. Mm. Wow. It makes sense. It makes sense. So, so, so let us go to, to the second question, um, Rev. JJ, on how does the dynamic of power flow through equalities and culture? The, the influence here uh, for, for any leader to be effective, he must be a leader who is able to command. Okay command respect within the community because as a leader the first thing for you to to make an impact in the community in the function that you carry out then you must have influence and influence. if you fail to have, to to have influence you even mm. fail to touch you even fail to be a role model because okay. nobody follow a person who has got no influence, you know? Because mm. once you do not have influence, people will not be following you. You'll surely be taking a straw. Mm. If you through some books of leadership by Dohan or Maxwell, they would say to you, as a leader, you must be able to, when you present, the first thing people mm. must buy into what you say. And that is influence. Okay. There's no way that people can follow you and, and buy in if they are not influenced by how you present, by how you carry yourselves in community. Because how you carry yourselves in the community is, is, is going to impact the, 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 your, your audience and, 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 and your, your, your followers. You know? Great leaders, mm -hmm. they, they manage to, to touch the lives of people because they understood the law of process, how you carry yourselves, how you do things, you know. Mm. In the church, in the community, even in the church as a, as a bishop, how you, you, you carry yourselves will influence us. I mean, we are here today, we are as ministers, but we have got people who happen to be role models to us. When you, Offered, you always had it the back, at the back of your mind that I remember this minister who influenced me, and to the extent that I could end up following and 
and coming in to the ministry because there are people who influence. And influence is important because people follow what they see and how you, 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 you carry yourselves in community or in the function mm -hmm. that you are carrying out. All right. Um, Reverend Tembu, in your understanding and also your experience, um, how do you think the dynamic of power influences um, e choices and also identity? Uh, okay, let me again maybe start with the previous question because uh, I'd already noted. And again, I think for me, it's okay. good that okay. the Mfundis, Mfundis comes with the spiritual uh, understanding and interpretation. You, you, mm. you know, you know Sun Tzu in the Art of War, he says, before you can win the war, you must win the terrain. Sure. The terrain is an environment in which you exercise leadership. So your personality sometimes does not matter if the terror is not conducive. You can have a great army, great skill, great articulation, great wisdom, but you could lead at the wrong time. I mm. always make an example in my leadership studies that you could have taken uh, uh, Dr. Nelson Mandela and put him in Zimbabwe. He could have failed in Zimbabwe, although he succeeded mm. in South Africa. Oh, you yes, know, oh, yeah. you would have taken Mugabe in Zimbabwe and put him in Britain and succeeded in Britain because of the resources that are available there. Mm. You know, uh, and again, in the in the vocation that I am, there are ministers who will say they failed, but it's not because they failed. The environment is never conducive. Mm. So mm. the terrain mm. for me becomes one of the greatest things that we must analyze before you can even exercise leadership. Mm. Now, when it comes to my own personal uh, experiences in terms of leadership, I believe that every individual, they must be able to empower themselves to the best of their ability. Mm. I always mm. say in, in this book, uh, the, 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 let me show it here, The Dance of Change. This is the book I was talking about. And this other sure. one. The, the, the fifth discipline of Peter saying He speaks about the theory of systems thinking, complexity mm. theory, chaos theories, uh, adaptive uh, uh, theories of leadership. That, that as a leader, you must constantly learn. You must constantly learn, you know? Uh, 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 and for me, therefore, what has become critical as a leader is to be able to constantly understand the environment, understand the power dynamics, understand who holds, who holds power. Let me make another example. You know, there are people at, 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 at the church service, which, which, which one, uh, one of the 48 laws of power says, you must not speak when it's, uh, do, do not speak if it's unnecessary. There are people who hold power without saying anything. Mm. You know, their silence, it's power. Yeah. Uh, President Tabonpeg is one of those people who his power was based mm. on the less that he was saved, you know? So for me, you must constantly understand the environment, learn when to speak, mm. learn to say, when to say no, so that whatever powers that comes to influence you, you don't become a subject because you'll never lead. That's why you then will hear the word captured. Captured leaders mm. are leaders who have succumbed to a certain power. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow, thank you. Uh, thank you, Reverend Kemu, for that. Um, I think I've got only two last questions, and then we'll, be, we'll conclude. Um, the, the, the first question is, um, the second last question, is that um, Reverend Tembu mentioned something about um, the conflict of power. So that leads to the question um, that says, how does the conflict of power, you know, the battle of power um, influence the, the status quo? Um, Zagela, if you can look at, at our country, for instance, um, you will see that more especially, you know, in, in this era of campaigns, elections and all that, there is a conflict of power. How does then that conflict of power influence the status quo. And the last question is, 
Um, I, I can't recall whether it was uh, Rev JJ or Rev Tembu who mentioned a gap between leaders and the community, between leaders and the followers. I think it was Rev JJ. How, how can we therefore build or bridge the gap between the leaders and the followers? Those are the last two questions. I, uh, can I come in while I'm remembering the yes, last yes, question? Yeah. Yes, you can the, come the, in. The, you can the, come how, in. how we bridge the gap between a leader and follower? I think we, we, we need first to, to level the play field. We, we, we okay. need to have, we must meet at a common place, a common understanding. There must be synergy between the leader and the followers. What mm. is before us? What do I want the followers to take from, from me? And what do I bring to them? And how I present that to them? Do I use the, what, what method, methodology? Because sometimes the approach, you may come with a good uh, uh, thinking, but be defeated by the methodology, the, the way, the approach that you present it to your, 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 your followers. So now for me, we, we need, there must first be a understanding between the two, the leader and the follower. There must be understanding, there must be trust. Mm -hmm. For a, a follower to trust the leader, it is only then that you can open up. It is when, like when we deal in counseling, a, a counselee cannot, uh, must first trust the counselor in order to divulge some serious uh, information because there's common understanding. The, the, the counselee has got trust, there's understanding between the two. And then by understanding between the two, they are able to, to meet at common ground. And yeah. for me, I think we must first trust each other there must first be an understanding between the two groups. We must have a common place. There must be synergy for, for them to say, here is a leader with to listen to us. Because if you listen to now to the campaign, mm -hmm. the leaders are campaigning for votes, but the outcry from communities that you only know us when you want us, when you want our vote. And it is unfortunately yeah, yeah. during this time of where we discover that so many people are still sitting in places without water for so many years. And they have voted for many times. Mm. So is mm. trust when people come to you and say, we want this from you, can we trust you? So I mm. think as to build that uh, a relationship we must first then meet a trust and understanding. All right. Let me leave right. it. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I think for me, just to add, I think I fully uh, agree with, with Babu Chant, that uh, is 100% so. In, in what he's raising, he said, we, we need a, a methodology. And then he said, why do we need it? For me, I want to suggest mm -hmm. the methodology. Uh, there, there is a, me a methodology uh, which I think for me, we, we leaders generally, they should subject mm -hmm. itself into is the methodology of learning and learning, relearning. Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. you need as a leader to know, I think also you are searching things of transformation, change and all those things. As a leader, you know, you must know that life is not stagnant. You must learn the situation before you can engage the situation. As soon as you engage the situation, you will understand that there are things that you should unlearn. That means that I must, I must take away because the environment is dictating otherwise. You know, this thing of mm. 
Kuzobanje, Koshalagunje, it's it, oh, yeah. it will never oh, work. Yeah. It won't mm. work. It's not working. Mm. You need to unlearn as the leader. And the challenge that we are facing with the campaigns, with everything, with the politicians, the slogans, they have not changed from 1976. The theory of what the society mm. should be, the political theory itself. I also agree with people who say mm. political science of South Africa is doom and useless, you know, because there's nothing mm. creative with it. Uh, what you call in leadership, a language, creative holism. There's no creative holism of understanding new dynamics of life. You know, understanding mm. new challenges of life. You can't, you can't promise my grandmother water, pro promise my mother water, and still promise me water, and promise my grandchildren water. It can't be like that. It can't be. It can't be. So, 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 so the point that I'm trying to make is that whether in church, whether wherever you are, for me, there is a methodology. It's called, you can Google it, those who are here, it's called a fifth discipline a learning organization, how organization reinvent themselves, how leaders reinvent themselves, how do you, how do you hold mm. together the past, the future, and the present, at the present moment. So for me, that's the methodology that yeah. I think what Umfundi Suchach was suggesting, we should try to engage ourselves with, if we want to understand how dynamics of power influences us. Last point, because we, we, can't, we can't always blame those that we elected into power as if we ourselves, we don't have power. Sometimes we mm. delegate the power, yet we've got power. <laughs> yes. you know, we, we, we make power something that is held by the office of so and so. Yes, it does have power, but we must not outsource our own power and deny ourselves opportunities to change. Sure. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much to, to Reverend Tembo. Um, we'll quickly go through um, our Facebook as after that we're going to allow you at the phone spam to make your conclusion. Um, we do have Uspogazi, um, Uspogazi, Makebesan. This is Yenage, um, is watching from uh, Pretoria. Uh, Oliver Tunes and I is also watching us. Musif uh, Wenga Paina is watching from Kabeha. This is very educational. Uabongwem sees and I is is watching us. Unoma Bele Kikilili and I get in Naga Kuluglam Tribi where we're artifacts. Esidige Ulizo Mgongo. Help us, Lord, not to use power in the wrong way. Umachoko um, Lokongwa and Anaya is watching us. Um, there's also a request Reverend Tim that you, you write down, you know, um, the names of those books that you have mentioned. So I think after we're done here, you can go to Facebook on this live and then on the comment section, you can write down the names of, of, of those books. Um, um, I'm listening attentively from Bethlehem Saget 616. Yes, leadership is not a position, but function. Sometimes people misuse the power. When they have been elected to lead, they think that they can boss other people. The problem is that people are not properly educated about leadership. From, from our um, Facebook. Um, oh, He's, he, she's also having a question on how to develop your leadership, uh, your leadership, your leadership life skills. I think one of you, uh, my ministers, can answer to that question when they are making a conclusion. The last one is from Ukolani uh, Monaka. It's like a very expensive point, uh, Rev Mtembo, around the terrain. Usansu is indeed a, strate a strategist. So those are the comments uh, from our Facebook page. Rev JJ, my sneakers are like to make your words of a, a, a conclusion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. In conclusion, I really need to say uh, dealing with, with, with leadership and also bringing the distinction between leadership and, and managing. Uh, Warren Benison, Benison alludes in his book that the manager would always ask how and when, but the leader asks what and why. The mm. manager has his eyes, eye always on the bottom line. 
the leader has his eye upon the horizon. The manager mm. imitates, the leader originates. The manager accepts the status quo, the leader challenges it. Mm. The manager, the class is the classic good soldier, the leader is his own person. The manager does things right, the mm. leader the right thing. Yes. And when 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 we we, we con in, in conclusion, I, I I really want to urge that as leaders, let us always be focused. Tabon mm. Becky once when you are charged with the responsibility of fetching water from the river. You don't get to the river and listen to the noise of the frogs. Mm. Your responsibility was to fetch water and go back home, not to mm. analyze the sounds of the frogs. As, as leaders, I think we are, it is important for us to focus on what is the core business, to fetch water and not to mm. analyze what we are not called to do. And mm. may God bless as we continue to grow as in the community. Thank wow. You. Wow, thank you so much. Reverend Chembo? Uh, once more, thank you so much for the opportunity. For me, my conclusion, you know, first uh, picking up on the question on how to self-develop. I, I think for me, reading is still a great discipline. That one, whether, whether they are, don't only read religious books, read politics, mm. uh, read uh, bi uh, biographies. For me, it has helped a lot. Uh, uh, reading leaders, Hitler, all those, those that are categorized as failed and those that are categorized as, 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 success, as, as successful in leadership. And my, my, mm. my, my, my conclusion will be on my, uh, just to state my philosophy of life, as I said earlier on, you learn, you unlearn, and you relearn. You might be in mm. a constant learning mode. Tell yourself that everything is learning. And according to me, and I will say this boldly, there is no failed leadership ever. Leadership exists in times and context facing certain, uh, certain challenges. Nelson Mandela was a hero for all of us. All of the sudden is being questioned today. Kwame Krume was supported by everyone in Ghana, was removed to power. Uh, 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 certain German people will see Hitler as, as, as a hero, Jewish will see him as, as, a, as, a, as an evil person. Uh, uh, so mm -hmm. all leaders uh, give, if we give an ego a time to lead more, uh, we don't know what history will have learned. If we give mm -hmm. Sukukwe a time to lead more. So for me, just exercise leadership learn in the in the environment you find yourself don't dictate but learn approach leadership with learning i thank you thank you so much uh, rev Tembu, and thank you so much to rev jj for the presentations it was a wonderful conversation very informative and educational at the same time see even to the people that were watching us from facebook there was the gira say and then we are out of here. Let us pronounce benediction. Alwaba ufefele unkosi tu Yesu Christu tando luka chitro bawo. Nobu zela nobu moengwele mwabu sale nati ngoku. Nanguna pagade. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Nkosi nika kuhulu kesa wabona na kutashe lende lai. Okay. Thank you.